Good morning. See this? See this? This is called the authorized version of the scriptures. Please go ahead and get one. Authorized version of the scriptures. King James Version. If you don't have one, why? Oh, you can't understand it, right? Who told you that? No, you can't understand it there, dear friend. Usually the thing is you just don't want to understand what God is actually trying to say to you. Yeah. Get your authorized version of scriptures. Please read along with me at the scriptures that we're going to be looking at today. You, you need to read along with me. You know why? Because I make mistakes. You need to see and hear. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Okay? You need to see and hear it. Follow me along. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily. Whether these things be so. Don't trust what I tell you. Trust what the scriptures say. Okay? All right. And if you have a Bible, you know, the NIV, ESV, or whatever monstrosity you want to call it, um, there will be a video in the description box where we uh, talk about the, you know, talk about the, what these Jesuit trained cemeterians teach you. Okay? You need what is perfect. You need what God actually said. Okay? And that is the authorized version of the scriptures. And to those of you saints which is the church of God, the church of the living God, pillar and ground of the truth. For you saints outside of my nation, America, um, I, I do beg your pardon. Uh, this video is more aimed at my countrymen, okay? I, I, beg, I beg your pardon. But um, you take note of this as well. We have a selection coming up. Okay? And the drama, the, the, the theater that we Americans are being force-fed is the, the Anglo-Saxon old Christian principles that is um, personified in Donald Trump. We also have the progressive, liberal, <laughs> woke, Feminazi mentality signified, personified in Kamala Harris. Okay? This is a performance, people. This is theater. This is a professional wrestling angle. This is not real, even though real life circumstances are involved. Okay? When I have talked to, or people send me hateful emails, <laughs> or accost me or stuff like that on this, I, I, it's like, especially with a lot of my American countrymen, it's like, dude, you need to grow up. Like the one quote, I don't know who said it, they say either Stalin or Lenin, the quote is basically, um, the people who cast the votes decide nothing. The people who count the votes decide everything. And who casts, who, you know, supposedly count these votes? The Jesuits. Rome. Okay? We do not have elections. We have selections. And I will go as far as to tell you that I personally believe that America maybe never even had an actual election. Maybe in the inception of this uh, free Masonic um, American experiment, okay, which was doomed uh, way back when, when a state devoted as Mary's land was in part of the original 13, this American experiment was done way back when, okay? Your vote means nothing. But if it makes you feel better, go ahead and do it. But your vote means absolutely nothing. Why do it? 
Link for that in the description box, of course. All right? And the, the, the thing comes up of the lesser of two evils. Uh, there is there is evidence on this channel where that the Lord has given your servant where I said I believe that they are going to put Trump in. And apparently, Brother Alexander sent me this link about another assassination attempt. It's like, oh, wow, dude. I no longer think, and you know what? Hey, if the Jesuits actually do select Trump, things are going to get worse. But Trump is the lesser of the two evils. And historically, and history can back this up, when it comes to the selections here in America, the worst for the nation is always the one who is selected. Who is the worst out of the two? That'd be Kamala Harris. Got a lot of videos on that. Uh, Jesuit trained little devil S. Okay? I no longer believe that they're going to select Trump. I do believe that they are going to select Kamala Harris. And make her the president of this um, joke called America. It might not have been their, their dear friend, whatever, in your mind, but... I'm telling you, ever since when the colonies had a state dedicated as Mary's land, um, that was over with. Rome already had its foothold. And we're going to be talking about this. Because uh, try to remember the thing that the media, Rome, doesn't want you to remember. The Jesuit psychological operation or oh, around 2019 and so on, okay? And that whole era when you had Trump and Hillary. America was not ready then for a woman to be the leader. I should say America was not conditioned then as it has been today. Oh, the toilet paper famine at the beginning of the Jesuit psychological operation that began in 2019. Jesuits, through the, their media, is like, uh, there's a toilet paper famine, and America bought it. And I'm telling you, dude, every single Jesuit was laughing their rear end off in the Vatican at America and other nations like... <coughs> These people fell for that. You can convince, if you can convince people of a toilet paper famine, very similar to evolution, if you can convince someone that you came out of a piece of, out of water as a sniveling little snot, and then over millions and billions and trillions of years, in a galaxy far, far away, you came from snot, from a monkey, to man, oh, they'll believe anything! And with this ridiculous, and this is still going on, this ridiculous woke mentality, we'll, we'll have lots of stuff about the, the woke, not the stupid, 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 woke mentality and stuff like that, and this, the, the sodomite agenda, uh, okay, and whatnot, um, way back when, and it wasn't that far, long ago, but see, they, they, don't, they don't want you to remember. That, see, that's a, that's a thing for you people to hinge in your brains about the tactics of those who serve Satan the Vatican. They want you to forget what happened just a few years ago. Okay? They want you for, to forget that. Way back when, when it was Billary and Trump and whatnot, America wasn't conditioned as it is today. America with the woke, the sodomite thing, and the, the disgusting, and hey, this comes from dear hemetic brethren and sistren, the joke Black Lives Matter, and all the, the racial things that have gone on, or kindredest things that have gone on in this country. Five years ago, America wasn't conditioned as it is today. 
And and, and Kamala Harris isn't actually considered uh, hemetic. She's a mix of many kindreds. But they're playing the hemetic card and the feather strong woman. And she's the worst one for for the visual stimuli for this country. Proverbs 14, 32 out of 35. That's an introduction, if you will. The wicked is driven away in his wickedness. Driven away. They go so far that to come back to a point of actual using logic, they go so far, they're driven away in his wickedness. But the righteous hath hope in his death. The righteous hope. Who is our hope, saints? Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, he is our hope. Wisdom, fear of the Lord, resteth in the heart of him that hath understanding, departing from evil. But that which is in the midst of fools is made known. Have you ever really tried? I mean, there's tons of videos here on YouTube to verify this. Um, have you ever tried to speak with one of these woke idiots? Hmm? Have you ever tried to actually have a civil conversation with some of these? Uh, like I was talking with a brother yesterday about this. It's like you try to be civil with these and these guys go off on some of the, like, like ah! on some of the most, like, th that sets you off, huh? Uh, you mess with the uh, horse, you know, the footman. What do you do when the prancing of horses? That's a t terribly Brad Eyes version of something in Jeremiah. But it's like, wow. You know, the littlest thing set this, these people off. And they spit at you, you know, when yelling and drool. And <laughs> I mean, it's, it's quite some. Wow. Wow. Beasts. Uh, I have encountered, I have seen, a lot of these woke people. And woke, yes, is nowadays a umbrella term. But the, the woke people, they, they, they're, they're not right in their head. And that is a prevailing um, philosophy here in America. Even though the majority don't buy it. The little speak for... The many. Righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. The king's favor is toward a wise servant, but his wrath is against him that causeth shame. Jeremiah 13. Jeremiah 13. 22 on the 27. Jeremiah 13. 22 on the 27. And if thou say in thine heart, Wherefore come these things upon me? For the greatness of thine iniquity are thy skirts discovered and thy heels made bare. Can the Ethiopian change his skin or the leopard's his spot? Then may ye also do good that are accustomed to do evil. And what, did, what was our opening text here today? Huh? What was that? Proverbs 14? Proverbs 14, the, uh, 32, the wicked is driven away in his wickedness. Driven away, driven away. What's driving him away? <laughs> 23 in Jeremiah 13, can the Ethiopian change his skin or the leopard his spots? Then may ye also do good that are accustomed to do evil. You know, in Jeremiah, the Lord tells Jeremiah, pray not for these people. Why? Because they have gone so far. I've, I've talked with people. There are people who actually think that American, America can be rescued. To be back to its glory days, huh? No, it can't. And what, and what were the glory days of America? When, when uh, this whole thing had Mary's Lamb.
and instituted, it was over with. Rome had its foothold. would be nice. It's like you, you listen to you see you listen to Trump and I don't a brethren have informed me. Uh, when you listen to this, some of the things that Trump stands for, they sound good. Okay? And uh, uh, tw uh, 15 minutes and look, dude. I am not a Republican. Okay? I am not a Republican. And I'm certainly not a Democrat. Okay? I'm neither. I'm neither. I don't care. It is evil. Okay? I don't care. I'm neither of this. I'm stepping back and seeing the professional wrestling angle for what it is. It's, it's a joke. Okay? Dude, your vote doesn't matter. Wake up. Please. Okay? Wake up. Grow up. Okay? People instinctively, it's like, you know, I'm not for Kamala Harris. Oh, God forbid. And they immediately, well, you're for Trump. Oh, God forbid. No, I'm neither. See, and that right there, dear friend, putting people into these little demographics in such a way, in such a way, because you might be cute. It's like, well, you say God is a God of variety. Yes, he is. But see, Rome does that for you, does that to you, to deceive you and to destroy you. Where the Lord is a God of variety and has set the boundaries, he does that for the betterment. Okay, I'm, not, I'm neither, dude, okay? I'm neither. I'm neither. And here's another thing. And here's a little, uh, here's a little, that you King James Bible-believing Christian in your little cultic denomination that you have created for yourselves. Um, you, you do realize that eventually we saints, we're going to be under a dictator. King of kings, lord of lords. We're going to be under a monarch, a monarchy. You know, a democracy. Uh, look at look at what has happened with democracy. Mm -hmm. Republic, something that is governed by laws, is a little bit more better. But see, here's the thing. Eventually, us saints, we are going to be under a dictator. If you want to, but hey, let's be blunt about it. King of kings, Lord of lords, God the Father, ruling and reigning at Jerusalem. Of what he says is going to go, okay? And he's going to show mankind what true government is. But, see, I, and this, this seems to be with these King James Bible-believing Christians, okay? I'm referring to it as what they want it to be, a Christian denomination, so there you go. Um, there are those out there who have this, this insane delusion that it's like going to be a purified democracy, <laughs> Verse 24. <laughs> yeah, that's all I got to say about that. In Jeremiah 13. Therefore will I scatter them as the stubble that passeth away by the wind of the wilderness. This is thy lot, the portion of thy measures from me, saith the Lord, because thou hast forgotten me and trusted in falsehood. Therefore will I discover thy skirts upon thy face, that thy shame may appear. I have seen thine adulteries and thy names, the lewdness of thy whoredom, and thine abominations on the hills and the fields. Woe unto thee, O Jerusalem! Wilt thou not be made clean? When shall it once be? And Isaiah 4, Isaiah 1, Isaiah 1, verses 4 on 6. Ah, sinful nation. A people laden with iniquity. Okay? A seed of evildoers. Children that are corruptors. 
deceiving and being deceived. Corruptors. Not just corrupt, but corruptors. Okay? They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backwards. Why should ye be stricken anymore? Ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick. The heart is faint. That's what happens when you call evil good and good evil. You, you get a warped brain. From the sole of the foot even onto the head. The whole person. Okay? There is no soundness in it. But wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. They have not been closed. Neither bound up. Neither mollified with ointment. Uh, when they say peace and safety, sudden destruction shall come upon them. They say peace, peace, and there is no peace. The peace that they offer you is peace with sin. And what's the result? Your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Your land, strangers devour it in your presence, like the Jesuit order. All the um, um, immigrants and whatnot. Writing this down for the description box. Okay? You know, uh, Jesuit sleeper cells. Okay? All right? And it is desolate as overthrown by strangers. What were we reading that? Uh, uh, we were supposed to read on verse 6, but we read verse 7 as well. You know, the uh, all the immigrants that are coming in here illegally and whatnot that are yoked up to the Vatican, the Jesuit order, sitting as sleeper cells who will come to when the Vatican calls. We've already been invaded, people. With all these little sleeper cells of these people that come in who are loyal to the Vatican. Okay? Alright? 1 John 3. 1 <laughs> John 3. Verses 8 on to verse 10. 1 John 3. Verses 8 on to verse 10. <clears throat> come on. Now, I'm going to tell you. This is not talking about sinless perfection, which these devils, some of these Christians, some of these, some of these, I mean, when you got antinomianists who are rightly refuting sinless perfection, that ought to show you how stupid sinless perfection is. When you got a twisted, wicked um, uh, theology like easy believism that can rightly refute something, that's bad, okay? That's bad, okay? But he that commits sin is of the devil. For, uh, verses 8 and verse 10 in uh, 1 John 3. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. And of course, John chapter 8. John chapter 8. John chapter 8 verse 44. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning in the Garden of Eden. And abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, because it comes from himself. Ye are your own God, okay? For he is a liar and the father of it. Go back to 1 John chapter 3, picking up verse 9. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. For his seed, his seed remaineth in him. And he, who, who, the seed, cannot sin because he is born of God. First Peter, first one verse. First Peter, one verse. Well, that says you got to stop sinning. You couldn't do that if I had a shotgun held at your children. Okay, you couldn't do that. What is this talking about? First Peter, chapter one, verse twenty-three. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the lowercase w, word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. That's not a capital W, word of God. That is a lowercase, word of God, written, word of God. Okay, what does this mean? 
Okay? Uh, Colossians 1, 27. Colossians 1, 27. Uh, brother, write this down. Because this is the simplest, quickest way to explain this. When you run into these idiots who, who go to 1 John chapter 3 and they go to verse 9, it's like, you guys uh, stop sinning. No. No. Colossians 1 verse 27. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you. The hope of glory. Christ in you, the seed. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. Born of God, meaning who is born again. Well, that's for the, just for the Jews. Paul never said it. You're right. He never said born again. He defined what it was to be born again, okay? So shut up, okay? So, whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. You are a new creature. If you go the way of the cross, the way the Lord elected, Okay, broken, contrite, and in fear of him, you call upon his name. He saves you, he seals you with himself. So, for his seed remaineth in him. The seed, who is the seed? The Lord Jesus Christ, Christ in you, the hope of glory. God within you cannot, will not sin. God within you cannot, will not guide you contrary to his word. Okay? That's what this is talking about. This is talking about who is in you. You're not saved. You are of your father, the devil. You are of that spirit of Antichrist. Okay? You are saved. Born again. You're born again because you are a new creature. Because you have the father dwelling within you. His seed remaineth in him. And he cannot sin. God cannot sin. God within you. Christ in you. The hope of glory. That's what that means, you wicked idiot. Okay? Because he is born of God. Born again, new creature. All right? That's what that means. God within you cannot, will not sin. But see, see, you see, God doesn't hold a gun at your head. You got to make the right choices. Okay, that pal? You got to make the right choices. All right? It's not like Calvinism that it says no free will. No, you have to make the right decisions. God is not going to force you to do right or wrong. Okay? It doesn't work that way. Verse 10. In this the children of God are manifested. And the children of the devil, who doeth, whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. Okay? All right? All right? And now 1 John 4, 5 on 6. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth, lowercase s, and the spirit of error. Isaiah 3, 13 through 14. Isaiah 3, 9 through 12. Isaiah 3, 9 unto 12. The shoe of their countenance doth witness against them. And they declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. Woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. Rewarded evil unto themselves. Say ye to the righteous, that it shall be well with him, for they shall eat the fruit of their doing. Woe unto the wicked, it shall be ill with him. For the reward of his hand shall be given him. There you go. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. Oh, my people. They which lead thee, cause thee to err, and destroy the way of thy paths. Now here, let's, let, let's, get, let's get your blood to boil. We're going to look at this. In history, there were women rulers. Cleopatra. And we're going to look at some here in Scripture. Okay? Cleopatra... Uh, Joan of Arc, 
uh, Queen of England, okay, <laughs> yeah, who was nothing but a, a puppet of the Vatican anyway, okay, all right. You know, some of you uh, dear English people uh, like to say, well, you know, you know, man, you know, England isn't controlled by the Jesuits. <laughs> come on, oh come on, come on, dude, you 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 you, you smoking what Dave's smoking, okay? But here's the thing. This verse is very telling. Why? Verse 12. Women rule over them. We're going to look at this. Women were not meant to be rulers. Keepers at home? Rule the house? Guide the house well? Not usurp authority over the man? Okay? But... Hey, 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 right away, it's like, oh, Brad, there were, okay. Okay, you may be right on some of these things, yes. But, see, here's the thing. Th th this is my standard. This is what I judge myself by and, by and others by. This right here. And we are going to see that women in positions of authority is not necessarily in the sight of God something that he abides for except if it be in terms of judgment. Oh, oh boy, I get you feminazi woke idiots all riled up, huh? Some of you sisters. Hmm? What's the word right there? Misogynist? I've been called that. Yeah, you never met my wife, huh? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I'm not a misogynist. Um, I, I understand what God says about the roles of a man and the roles of a woman. Okay? But it, it, I mean, it's written down for you. See, and those of you, especially you sisters who have issue with that, your issue is not with me. Your issue is with the Lord. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O oh, my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err, and destroy the way of thy past. And right away to defend yourselves, you might be thinking, well, Deborah, well, she was a prophetess. Okay? And she was considered a judge. Yes. Yes. Okay? And you might be saying, well, Queen Esther. Uh... Queen Esther, number one, didn't usurp authority over Ahasuerus. And number two, she genuinely besought King Ahasuerus, okay? So you can't fall back on Queen Esther. And the comparison between Esther and Jezebel, who we're going to consider today, is not even a fair comparison. Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 8. Ezekiel chapter 8. Now we're going to have some light expository here. Just light. Just light. Ezekiel chapter 8. And we're going to read verse 5 on to the close of Ezekiel 8. Okay? Ezekiel 8 verse 5. Then said he unto me, Son of man, lift up thine eyes now the way toward the north. So I lifted up mine eyes the way toward the north, and behold, and behold, northward at the gate of the altar, this image of jealousy in the entry. Image of jealousy. Image of jealousy. Jeremiah, <laughs> Jeremiah 10. I remember a while ago someone looking to justify the worship of Rome, uh, of the pagan, satanic, Roman, Catholic, all things that awful for you, um, the December 25th nonsense, came to this passage in Jeremiah 10 and tried to negate instruction and in righteousness. Justifying sin because of man's tradition. Yeah, yeah. Deck the halls there, pal. Yeah. Anyway, I just had to mention that, but this is an, this is an appropriate thing. Jeremiah 10, verse 1 and verse 6. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh on to you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen. 
jingle bells, that, that's satanic, pagan, heathen, Roman Catholic. Okay. Okay. Hey, but, 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 let's continue, okay? And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. Yeah, don't worry about it. You know, the talks about the blood moons and all these vapor and fire, smoke in the sky. Oh, boy. Um, oh, we walk by faith, not by sight. Okay? The Jews require a sign. We're not Jews. Okay? We're Gentiles, you know. <laughs> We're not Jews, okay? All right? In the scriptural context. All right? For the custom, uh, customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. And some certain individual came to this to try to defend the putting up of the satanic Roman Catholic Christ's mass tree. And we're, we're, we're Dutch. And, you know, context, yes, this is talking about an idol. Yes, it is. But all scripture is given by inspiration of God, is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, but in order to justify your own stupid little, well, all things are lawful for me, I guess instruction in righteousness goes out the window. Anyway, for the custom of the people, for the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. Yeah, you know, you take one out of the, the forest and then you put it in a little stand and then you screw it in there and then you feed it with seven up or Sprite, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And they deck it with gold, all the gold. Oh, shit, just dug. I, I, I'm not going to get off on that. They are upright as the palm tree. But speak not. They must needs be born because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, neither also is it in them to do good. For as much as there is none like unto thee, O Lord, thou art great, and thy name is great in might. And when you look back at Ezekiel chapter 5, what does it say? Okay, Ezekiel chapter 5. And behold, northward at the gate of the altar, this image of jealousy in the entry. So it was meeting you at the gate, okay? Meaning it wasn't in sight there. Because uh, some people will go to, with something like this, uh, to Revelation 13, Revelation 13, 11 on to verse 15, all right? Revelation 13, verses, not, nine, not 19, verses 11 on to verse 15, Okay? And I beheld another beast coming out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him that causeth the earth, and causeth the earth, and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, mocking uh, Elijah. Okay? And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. An image, what? To the beast. Now, will this be a statue, a holographic image via computer? I don't know. But what say the scripture? And he, oh, uh, image to the beach, which had the wound by a sword and did live. Verse 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Now, that, and that brought up in conversation, conversation recently with a brother. Um, I, I believe it was Brother Alexander. Uh, might not have been. But, you know, you hear, hear about in Catholicism these tales about the weeping statues or the statues that have blood coming out, about, out of their hands or what silly nonsense. 
and uh, uh, Roberto Rivera, Alberto Rivera gave testimony about in a certain statue somewhere in South America where guys would go into the statue and do a pump and cause the statue to cry or something dripping or something like that. That And when you look into these um, miraculous things about these statues that cry and that drip oil or blood or something, uh, most of the times they're fake. But, but, there are incidences where devils, not God, little G God, not the God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, but the God of this world will cause these actual things to happen. Those are, that's, those are miracles done by devils to deceive people. There are incidents, and you can look this up on your own time, there are incidences where the legitimacy is like, okay, that's actually happening. That's not of God the Father. That is of the liturgy God of this world, Satan, Lucifer. Okay? All right? We can, we can go off on a tangent on that for a long time. Okay? But this image that is talked about in Revelation, okay? Is that a holographic image? I don't know. I don't know. Is it uh, because, and remember, the body of Christ is not on the earth during that time. During the time of Jacob's trouble, it is faith and works. Okay? So, I gravitate more that it's going to be an actual physical statue, not a hologram, and the uh, third member of the satanic trinity uh, will be manipulating it to actually come to life. That's what I'm inclined to believe, okay? But let's continue now in Ezekiel 8, picking up at verse 6. He said, furthermore, unto me, son of man, Seest thou what they do, even the great abominations that the house of Israel committeth here, that I should go far off from my sanctuary? But turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations. See, the more you sin. See, easy believism tells you, um, preaches basically, the more you sin, the better it is, because the more God's grace abounds. But the more you sin, <laughs> the further it takes you away from God. Okay? That's just the fact. That's something that they like to blur. Okay? Let's continue. And he brought me to the door of the court. And when I looked, behold, a hole in the wall. Then said he unto me, Son of man, dig now in the wall. And when I had digged in the wall, behold, a door. And he said unto me, Go in and behold the wicked abominations that they do here. Verses 10 and... Uh, oh, not yet. So I went in and saw... And behold, every form of creeping things and abominable beasts and all the idols of the house of Israel betrayed upon the wall round about. You can liken this maybe onto hieroglyphics. Okay? You can. Betray it on the wall. You know, that you can kind of link that in with hieroglyphics if you want. Okay? I'm not, I wouldn't dispute that. Okay? Verse 11 on verse 12. And there stood before them 70 men of the ancients, of the ancients, of the house of Israel, the ancients, the, one who had, the ones who had seen the former days, the former glories, those who, the ancients that ought to have known better, the ancients who ought to have been instilling into the younger generations the things of the Lord, ought to have. But see, when children are your oppressors and women rule over you, what happens? You have elderly people in their 60s, 50s and 60s. I guess you can consider me uh, age-wise elderly. <laughs> okay, I'm 50 years of age. But you see a re perversion, a reversion. You see a 50-year-old wanting to look like a 12-year-old. And you have a 12-year-old wanting to look like an adult. It's, it's perverse. You know, the beauty of the age is the gray head, okay? Beautiful, gray, beautiful, white hair, beautiful. Some say, well, that's a sign of trouble. I'll, I'll give you that, <laughs> you know, but whatever, okay? But what in this visual stimulated society, especially here in America, it's all eye candy. You got little girls walking around like whores. You got little boys walking around like whores. Visual stimuli, okay? 
And in the midst of them stood Jazaniah, Jazaniah, the son of Shaphan, with every man his censer in his hand, and a thick cloud of incense went up. Hmm. Hmm. Then said he unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients, the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark? The ones who are, the ancients, the ones who, in theory, who saw, who are supposed to know better and are supposed to instill upon the younger. But when you have children as your oppressors and women who rule over you, it's all topsy-turvy. It's backwards. Okay? Then said he unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark? Every man in the chamber of his imagery. For they say, The Lord seeth us not. The Lord hath forsaken us. Psalm 119. Mem. So, why don't you know where Psalm 119 Mem is? Hmm? Why don't you? Hmm? Do like my wife did. You know, she uses a Holman with a super giant print. She, she wrote in the side there, the bracketed thing for Psalm 119. Okay? Why aren't you doing it? But, for that sake, Psalm 119, Mem, 97 on to verse 104. Okay? I shouldn't do that, but I'm doing it. Because like some brother, you know, brother, not every, okay, fine. But the ancients of the land, the, the ancients who saw the former things, who ought to have known better, but, Children are your oppressors and women rule over you. Oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Thou through thy commandments hast made me wiser than mine enemies. For they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers. For thy testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients. Why? Because I keep thy precepts. Beautiful little tie in there, isn't it? Uh, their brother, sister, with verses 11 and 12 in Ezekiel chapter 8. About the ancients of the land who were the ones in, who were leading, basically, this revolt of, against God. Why? And as a form of judgment, children are your oppressors and women rule over you. And the ancients who are supposed to know better, where are they? Walking around in short shorts, uh, painting themselves up with war paint, trying to get the six-pack ab to, to look, make them look young again. Yeah, excuse me. <clears throat> Back in uh, Psalm 119, Mem, I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy word. Oh, wait a minute. I, I, uh, verse 100. I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy word. Like, you know, like we're looking at in uh, Ezekiel, what they didn't do. Okay? I have not departed from thy judgments, for thou hast taught me. How sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through thy precepts I get understanding, departing from evil. Therefore I hate every false way. Every false way. Okay? Go back now to... Um, Ezekiel chapter 8, picking up at verse 13. He said also unto me, Turn yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations that they do. Verse 14. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. Tammuz. Up. Uh, Nimrod, Semiramis, Ninus. The Trinity that 
that's the trinity that the Egyptian trinity is based off of and the Roman Catholic trinity is based off of. Now, those of you cutie pies will say, well, Semiramis and Ninus is not in Scripture. You're right. But the Queen of Heaven is and Tammuz is. You know, Queen of Heaven, Semiramis, who married her son because she was telling people that uh, Ninus, Tammuz was Nimrod reincarnated. That's that's the actual Roman Catholic Trinity base, okay? Yeah, it is. They, 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 you know, there's your Trinity. To hell with your Trinity, okay? But, but Jeremiah seven, Jeremiah seven, Tammuz. Here's the link. Jeremiah seven. Thank you, Lord. Verses seventeen on twenty. Seest thou not what they do in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? The children gather wood. Children are your oppressors and women rule over you. And the fathers kindle the fire. And the women knead their dough. The little, the little, you know, the little, uh, little pucarist, okay? Okay, which they call God, okay? And the women need their dough to make cakes to the Queen of Heaven. That's the Roman Catholic Mary, not the actual scriptural Mary. Okay? Uh, hey, Catholic! Okay? Catholic, I'm going to offend you. Okay? Your Mary that you worship, that you call the uh, Redemptrix, you know, um, that is not the scriptural Mary. Your Mary, Catholic, is this Mary. And I say unto you, Catholic, to hell with your Mary, because your Mary is not the Mary of Scripture. Now here, there's your Mary, Catholic. Your Mary is not the Mary of Scripture. Take fence, take a gate. Search the Scripture. There will be a nice little video for you to consider in the uh, description box for you to consider. Okay, you, you, you're serving Satan, Catholic. You're in Satan's church. Okay? Anyway, let's continue. All right? Offering cakes to... Uh, and the women need their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods that they may provoke me to anger. You're doing the, you know, you're doing your little pucarist with the little wine that the Jesuit priest does the woody, 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 abracadabra, hocus pocus. Um, you're provoking God to anger. Okay? Do they provoke me to anger, saith the Lord? Verse 19. Do not, do they not provoke themselves to the confusion of their own faces? And God is not the author of confusion. Who is? Okay. All right. <laughs> that, 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 that's uh, that's, uh, that's uh, pretty simple there, guys. Let's continue. Verse 20. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, Mine anger and my fury shall be poured out upon this place, upon man, upon beast, upon the trees of the field, upon the fruit of the ground, and it shall burn and shall not quench, and shall not be quenched. And of course, when we're on this ride here, we have to go to Jeremiah 44. Jeremiah 44, verses 15 on to 23. Then all the men which knew that their wives had burned incense unto other gods. Children are your oppressors and women rule over you. And all the women that stood by, a great multitude, even all the people that dwelt in the land of Egypt, in Pathros, answered Jeremiah, saying, As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee. But we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth. To burn incense unto the Queen of Heaven. That's the modern Roman Catholic Mary. Okay? Alright? And to pour out drink offerings unto her. As we have done, we and our fathers, our kings and our princes, in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. For they have, for then had we plenty of victuals, and were well, and saw no evil. All this will I give to thee. If thou fall down and worship me, all will be thine. Eh? Who's answering the prayers? Huh? Who's answering them prayers, Catholic? <laughs> Who's answering them prayers, Catholic? Okay? <laughs> Let's continue. 
But since we left off to burn incense on to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven, that's the modern Roman Catholic Mary, and to pour out drink offerings unto her, we have wanted all things and have been consumed by the sword and famine. And when we burn incense to the Queen of Heaven and pour out drink offerings unto her, did we make her cakes to worship her and pour out drink offerings unto her without, without our men? Who was, who was guiding them? Children are your oppressors and women who rule over you. Then Jeremiah said unto all the people, to the men and to the women, and to all the people which had given them that answer, saying, The incense that ye burned in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, ye and your fathers, your kings and your princes, and the people of the land, did not the Lord remember them? And it came... And came it not into his mind, so that the Lord could no longer bear because of the evil of your doings? And because of the abominations which ye have committed, therefore is your land a desolation, and an astonishment, and a curse, without an inhabitant as at this day. Which will happen, I believe, eventually, especially when the Jesuit order, I believe, uh, select Kamala Harris to be the front, man, a front woman of this nation. Because ye have burned incense, because ye have sinned against the Lord, and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord, nor walked in his law, nor in his statutes, nor in his testimonies, therefore this evil has happened unto you as at this day. So, and we're going to look at this uh, at the very end of this video. So, think about this. The Jesuits being allowed to select Kamala Harris as the front woman of America. And yes, Putin would much rather deal with Kamala Harris because, you know, Trump, Trump well, y'all, even, you know, Trump is Trump, you know, bull in a china shop kind of, type of dude. Of course, of course, someone, another nation would love to deal with Kamala Harris. Huh? Yeah, because most other nations get it. <laughs> yeah, America, you're, yeah, you're going to have a woman ruling over you now. That's a sign of judgment. It's a sign of judgment. And see now, you, you feminazis out there, it's like, you're a misogynist. You hate women. No, I don't. No, I don't. I love women. I, 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 have, I just happen to have a very gorgeous, lovely, beautiful woman to myself. Okay? I do. I do. Okay? Who, her and I are one flesh. That's, that's more than physical. Okay, we did, all right, we've, we talked about that in marriage, and uh, that will be in the description box for you, okay? But Genesis 3, verses 16 on to verse 19. Now, now, children are your oppressors and women rule over you, okay? Remember this. Genesis 3, verses 16 on to verse 19. On to the woman, he said. This is after, you know, the debacle. The Lord giving Adam the chance to come clean. He blew it. You know, blame God, then the woman, and then he's like, ah, I did it. Then he went to the woman, and the woman said, the serpent made me do it. The devil made me do it. On to the woman, he said. I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy, and thy conception. In sorrow shalt thou... In sorrow, in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. Hey, women, I, I wouldn't know, but um, those of you who have bore children, um, imagine it not hurting like it did. I can't even, you know, but just imagine. Part of judgment for the Garden of Eden is what we just looked at. And thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Now, you know, some, especially these Baptists of the Jerk Hiles persuasion, you know, who will justify, you know, uh, smacking women. And I'll tell you, uh, if you are one of those types of people, the Lord rebuke you, you scumbag. Okay? All right, that, that's, you know, videos on that in the description box. 
But what this means is God, man, woman, child. That is the scriptural thing. God, man, woman, child. Man is to be the head. Okay? Feminism. God, woman, child, pet, man. Sometimes they even go God, woman, pet, child, man. But man always at the bottom. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. And sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. And sweat, in the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou art turned unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. And thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Consequence for the sin of the Garden of Eden. Okay? And now Amos, Amos chapter 5, Amos chapter 5. See, woman means of man. Woman, you were created for man, not man for the woman. And see, God designed you for a glorious purpose, to be a help me, to guide the home, to nourish children. You, woman, bring mankind on, in er, onto earth. Glorious, beautiful, a specific, prestigious thing for you as woman. We well, can't do that. See, man is supposed to be the head, to be the ruler, okay? As if you will. And see, you don't like that language, but see, that, that's what Scripture says. But see, we are to know our roles, okay? We, God has assigned unto mankind, God, man, woman, child. That's how it is. Rome has interjected, God, woman, child, pet, man. Okay? And see, that's doomed to fail and Satan knows it. Okay? All right? But in, in Amos 5, verses 21 on 27, God speaking, I hate, I despise your feast days. I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. Oh, you know, like chestnuts roasting on an open fire, Jack, no, Jack Frost nipping at your nose. Oh boy, you could do that all day. <laughs> Though ye offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept them. Neither will I regard the peace offerings of your fast, fat beasts. Take thou away from me the noise of thy songs. Deck the halls with all the holly. La, 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 la. <clears throat> Excuse me. Excuse me. Did I do that? <clears throat> For I will not hear the melody of thy vials. Ooh. Vials. Oh, we got to put the music one in there. Okay. And hey, I like the sound of the vial. But like we prove in that music video, scripturally, vial is not painted in a positive light. That, that you got to deal with the scriptures on that one, pal. You do. Okay. I like the sound of the violin. I like to hear the violin. So do you. The violin is a beautiful instrument. Scripturally, which is my standard, vial is not painted in a positive light. Music video, <laughs> every pun intended, will be in the description box for you, okay? But let judgment <gasps> run down as waters and righteousness as a mighty stream. They refuse to do judgment. <laughs> Ex uh, they refuse to do judgment. Okay? They refuse to do judgment. Okay? Have ye offered unto me sacrifices and offerings in the wilderness forty years, O house of Israel? But ye have borne the tabernacle of your Moloch and Shuin, your Images, the star of your little G God, 
which ye made to yourselves. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Therefore will I cause you to go into captivity beyond Damascus, sat the Lord, whose name is the God of hosts. Okay? And go back to Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 15. Then said he unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and I and thou shalt see greater abominations than these. Now, in Daniel chapter 9, Daniel chapter 9, which is immediately after the book of Ezekiel, okay, Daniel 9, 25 on to 27. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and threescore and two weeks. The streets shall be built again and the wall in troublous times. Now, it is often mentioned and believed, and I am an adherent to this, that the seven weeks are actually referenced unto the seven years of the time of Jacob's trouble. How that transmits or whatnot, not really sure, but when you read the context, it fits. Okay, absolutely. And the street shall be built again, and the wall, even in troublous times, giving you to giving you evidence that the third rebuilt temple will be built during the time of Jacob's trouble, and with all the deep pockets of the Vatican, when the body of Christ says, "Don't get that thing up, lickety split." Okay, you got some people who say, "I oh, it would take them a lot of years to build a temple again." No, it wouldn't. With the deep pockets of the Vatican and the body of Christ out of here, they'll get that thing up in no time. I, I bet in months they'll get that thing up in no time, okay? Let's continue. And after three score and two weeks, three and a half years, shall Messiah be cut off. Meaning, they, the Jews, are going to reinstitute actual scriptural sacrificial system but see it's in vain because the death burial and resurrection the blood shed on the cross has already happened but see they think they are doing it rightly in terms to the Mashiach who already came that's what that means okay but not of himself and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary and the end thereof shall be what they flood and unto the end the war uh, and, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. And he shall confirm the covenant, he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Daniel 11, Daniel 11, 30 unto 33. Who's this he? For the ships of Kitten shall come against him. Therefore he shall be grieved and return and have indignation against the Holy Covenant. So shall he do. He shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake the Holy Covenant. And arms shall stand on his part. They shall pollute the sanctuary of strength and shall take away the daily sacrifice and they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. The abomination that maketh desolate. It's a statue. No, it isn't. It's the one that's at the beginning of the gate. No, it isn't. Let's keep reading. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he Who's the he? The abomination that maketh desolate. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. And they that understand among the people shall instruct many. Yet they shall fall by the sword and by famine, by captivity and by spoil many days. Hmm. Matthew 24, which is describing the time of Jacob's trouble. Matthew 24 doctrinally has absolutely zero, zilch, zip, nada to do with us doctrinally today. 
Oh, there's a lot of instruction in righteousness in there. Yes, there is. But it's not for us. It's just not talking. This is talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. Matthew 24, 15 on the 21. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. So readeth, let him understand. Well, that's a statue. No. No, it isn't. That man of, we're going to look at this. That man of sin, the son of perdition, erroneously referred to as the Antichrist. The Antichrist. Hey, 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 hey. $2,000 challenge of money I don't have. Show me verbatim the Antichrist in Scripture. It's not there. That man of sin, son of perdition, the abomination that make it desolate, it's a person. Who is that? That man of sin, erroneously referred to as the Antichrist. And the Antichrist, show it to me in the authorized version of the scriptures, the Antichrist, and I'll give you $2,000 of money I don't have. Then let, then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Yes, because during the time of Jacob's trouble, the Sabbath day ordinance will be reinstituted. Okay, remember, during the time of Jacob's trouble, despite what these stupid free gracers tell you, it's not by faith and works. It's, uh, it's not by grace through faith. The free gracer tells you it's by grace through faith from beginning to end. Okay? During the time of Jacob's trouble, it is faith and works. Okay? Got lots of videos proving that. All right, let's continue. For then shall be great tribulation. Then shall be great tribulation. And it says, after the tribulation or of those days, or where does that say? Um, immediately after the tribulation of those days in verse 29, the great tribulation, find it for me. It's not there. It's not there. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, okay? Okay? <laughs> for such, okay, for then shall, for then shall be great tribulation, the Great tribulation. It's not in scripture. Or you got close right there. The tribulation of those days. Okay. For then shall be great tribulation. But you do not see the great tribulation there. Catholic. You don't. Okay. All right. And, and 2 Thessalonians. Which is doctrine. For us today, Second uh, Thessalonians 2 and 3, or 3 on to verse 4, Let no man deceive you by any means, but that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, falling away those who were not of us, being exposed that they are not of us. It is not safe people getting messed up. We've proved that on many occasions. Someone who wants to dispute that is trying to justify themselves and cover their own rear end, Mr. Fig. Okay? Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. That's happening. And that man of sin, the son, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. The son of perdition. Okay? Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, and that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God, the abomination that maketh desolate. That's who that is. Oh, and we got to read, um, uh, where is that? Uh, verse 7. It's like, well, see, that, uh, that man of sin, the son of perdition, is revealed, then the redemption happens. <laughs> I believe in the uh, post tribulation rapture because of Second Thessalonians chapter two. You didn't re keep reading, pal. 
you probably stopped at verse 4. Or you went on to verse 5. You didn't keep reading. Verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Who is the he? Letteth means to hinder. He is the body of Christ. The body of Christ gets taken out of the way. The redemption of the purchased possession. Then what happens? And then, verse 8, shall that wicked be revealed. Who is that? The abomination that maketh desolate. That son of perdition. The son of perdition. Okay? Falling away is happening. We get taken up. Then, that man of sin, the son of perdition, the abomination that maketh desolate. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy at the brightness of his coming. Second coming. Okay? That's what that is. All right? Back in Ezekiel chapter 8, picking up at verse 16. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house. And behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men with their backs toward the temple of the Lord, turning their back on God, and their faces toward the east, the land of the rising sun. The sun rises from the east and sets in the west. Look at this. And they worshipped the sun toward the east. The little Jesuit Roman Catholic priest rising the sun. The, the Baal cookie that you Catholics are told is the actual. <laughs> Body of Christ. Woody, woody, woody. There it is. <laughs> the rising of the sun. You know, the Jesuit priest turns his back to you, you know, even for... <laughs> <laughs> even Francis, you know, he does the... The rising of the sun. Baal. Baalite. Baal worship. Catholic. You know, you people claim to be Satanists. Why aren't you Catholics? Because that is the height of the Satanic religion. That's Satanist religion. Catholicism. Anyway, let's, let's continue now. Verse 17. Then he said unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Is it a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they commit here? For they have filled the land with violence. And have returned to provoke me to anger. And lo, they put the branch to their nose. Don't want, to, don't want anything to do with it. Therefore will I also deal in fury. Mine eye shall not spare. Neither will I have pity. And though they cry in mine ears. With a loud voice. Yet will I not hear them. Second Kings. 17. Second Kings 17. Here we are in America today. 2 Kings 17. 29. Beginning at verse 29. Ah, oh, to the close of the chapter in 2 Kings 17. Howbeit every nation made gods of their own and put them in the houses of of the high places which the Samaritans had made, every nation in their cities which dwelt, which cities wherein they dwelt. And the men of Babylon made Sukoth Benol, and the men of Kuth made Nergal, and the men of Hamath made Ahisha, Ashiama, and the Avites made Nibsh, Nibhaz and Tartak, and the Sephirites burnt their children in the fire to Adremelech and Anamelech, the gods of the, of the, the gods of Sepharvim. So they feared the Lord and made unto themselves of the lowest of them priests of the high places, which sacrificed 
for them in the houses of the high places. They feared the Lord. They said they did. With their mouth they shewed much love. But their hearts, their hearts, went after their own covetousness. Ye shall be as God. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him. And they set up their little denominations and their little statues and stuff like that and whatever. Yeah. So they feared the Lord. No, excuse me, verse 33. They feared the Lord and served their own gods. They, served, they feared the Lord, yet they served their own gods. How can that happen? It can't! See, they were giving lip service. Okay? Their hearts were after themselves, but made them feel good. After the manner of the nations whom they carried away from thence. Unto this day they do after the former manners. They fear not the Lord. See, that's not a contradiction. The Lord is telling you, it's like, look, these guys claim to fear me. But look, they made all these gods in their heart, and they are their own gods. See, remember, the idol is always the extension of the true what? Ye shall be as gods. The idol is always the extension of the ex exaltation of self. All things are lawful for me. Now things are, all, are expedient. See, when you're justifying something that is pagan, Roman Catholic, Satanic, what, what, it's number one, it's an idol, but what is the true idol? Yourself! That's how that works. That's how, idolatry is always the extension of the true idol. Yourself! Neither do they after their statutes. Or after their ordinances, or after the law and the commandments, which the Lord commanded the children of Jacob, whom he named Israel, with whom the Lord had made a covenant, and charged them, saying, Ye shall not fear other gods, nor bow yourselves to them, nor serve them, nor sacrifice to them. But the Lord who brought you, but the Lord who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. With great power and a stretched out arm, him shall ye fear, and him shall ye worship, and to him shall ye do sacrifice. And the statutes and the ordinances and the law and the commandment which he wrote for you, ye shall observe to do forevermore. Ye shall not fear of the gods. And the covenant that I have made with you, ye shall not forget, neither shall ye fear of the gods. But the Lord your God ye shall fear. And he shall deliver you out of the hand of all your enemies. All things are lawful for me. But not all things are expedient. As for the word of the Lord that you have told us, we will not hearken unto thee, but we will do as we have always done. It's tradition, man. Albeit they did not hearken, but they did after their former matter. Manner. So these nations feared the Lord. Did, did they? No, they didn't. They just said it. They say they did. And served their grave, graven images. You talk about uh, redundant, okay? You talk about an oxymoron, okay? They feared the Lord and served their graven images. And you read the Ten Commandments, you know, the thing about the graven images, which Rome takes out, okay? <laughs> uh, they... they, they it doesn't mix. So these nations, you know, they claim, oh, we fear God. Uh, what's that Buddha statue? Uh, why are you the measure of your own whatever by justifying, well, all things are lawful for me. See how that works? So these nations feared the Lord and served their graven images. Both their children and their children's children, as did their fathers, so do they on to this day. In, in Revelation chapter 2, in Revelation chapter 2, <laughs> Revelation chapter 2, a uh, very, very personal thing I want to tell you, um, a dear sweetheart of a brother, um, two people have given me scriptures. Uh, this was given to me, uh, this was 
expensive. <laughs> this was given to me as a gift. Um, you know, my, my beloved Cambridge. This one has the Apocrypha in it. This was given to me by somebody. Uh, but a dear sweetheart of a brother gave me this. This one, which I use every day. Now, thank you, brother. You know who you are. Shh. But um, let another man praise thee and not thine own lips. But um, it's not a red word set of scriptures. There's nothing wrong with red word scriptures personally. Personally. I, I'm kind of gravitating away from them. You know, I am. Uh, there's a reason. Because have you ever run into these red word Christians? Which only pay attention to the red words in scriptures. Like, those are the ones that you, you live by today. Um, after the death, burial, resurrection, well, okay, maybe. But before the death, burial, and resurrection, uh, he, was, he was preaching the kingdom of heaven unto the Hebraic Jewish people. Okay? Watch out for these red word Christians. But in Revelation chapter 2, 18 on the 23. And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira, write these things, saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. And you know, the red word Christians always, <laughs> without exception, you know, well, I follow the words of Jesus. And they always point to the Sermon on the Mount. Sermon on the Mount is beautiful. Instruction and in righteousness absolutely uh, is there, but the people, doctrinally, that is not for us today. Before the death, burial, and resurrection, the faith was in Jesus as king of the Hebraic Jews in context of the kingdom of heaven that he was offering. Faith was not in the death, burial, and resurrection before it happened. Because they didn't know about it. They weren't aware of it until it happened. Or else you would have a contradiction with Ephesians chapter 3. And interesting, a lot of the red word Christians point to Paul as being a false prophet. Whoa, imagine that. Not rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay, but let's continue. Okay? Well, let's continue here. In Revelation, where are we at? Uh, 18. Okay? And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira, write these things that saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel. Oh, and by the way, Woman of God two-part uh, video will be in the description box. Very first. Very first one for you to look at. Okay? All right? Or are you cold? So cold. I gotta remember to put that one in there. Okay? Justifying. Okay. Anyway. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach, to, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Now, here are the verses that really throw you. I, I've, I've, seen, I've done this, and it throws you every single time. And see, what happens is with these red word Christians, you come to here, it's like, okay, you're, you know, you're Jesus who has no conditions, doesn't judge, not angry, angry, loves you unconditionally. That's not true. Um, you bring them here, and they're confounded. They're dumbfounded. They don't know what to do with it. And they always seem to revert to Trinitarianism to try to explain it. Well, you know, the sun is not as intense. I, I've heard this. Well, the sun is a little bit more lenient than the father. Incidentally, I, I did, did the Lord shut that off right away. When the one guy, the, the one uh, guy I was talking to about that, it, that got shut down. It's like um, Jesus Christ is saying yesterday, today, and forever. 
I, the Lord, change not. What changes is the way God deals with people. Salvation changes in the dispensation. His grace is there in everyone or else we go up like a puff. Yeah, there, there, there's really, you know, well, the, the son is not as intense as the father. Woo! Yeah, it's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> and you try to talk to someone and they, they it's like, oh, Okay. Okay. I I I'm I'm I got something. You want to try? No. Okay. Bye. Anyway. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation. I don't see a thee there, except they repent of their deeds. Verse twenty-three. This is your little sweet, lovey dovey Jesus. And this verse, particularly with the red word, Christians, always throws them. Every single time. And I will kill her children with death. I will kill her children with death. And all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and the hearts, and I will give to every one of you according to your works. And also in, in the opening chapters of the book of Revelation, our Lord says, uh, you know, Nick, the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, you know, putting yourself on your high horse, their hot shot, and exalting yourself above, above the common people, you know. He hates that. But yet, your lovey-dovey Jesus will kill her children with death. That I, I, dude, I've experienced this on several occasions. Uh, you bring, you know, you run into a red word Christian. Bring them right there. See, see how they react. They'll go to Trinitarianism. Well, the Father, <laughs> God is spirit, soul, and body, not three persons. You idiot. Okay, okay, don't say that. You know, but, <laughs> but okay, that that throws them. That throws them every single time okay <laughs> it, it, it really does <laughs> it really does now uh, first kings what about this Jezebel Jezebel now Jezebel in appearance didn't rule however and Jezebel and we talk about this in the woman of God video uh, quite thoroughly and thoroughly I, I wouldn't thoroughly be a little bit more accurate there, brother. You will answer that. Um, anyway, but Jezebel is a type of the Roman Catholic Church. Okay? Jezebel. She openly did not run the country. Ahab. King. Okay. But behind the scenes, like a marionette, man manipulating people, manipulating her husband. Okay? See, that's why you cannot compare Esther onto, you know, Jezebel. I mean, come on. Esther didn't manipulate Ahasuerus. She pleaded sincerely with him. Okay? You can do, well, what about the feast? You know, she wasn't manipulating. Okay? Jezebel was a manipulatrix. Okay? But, what about Jezebel? First uh, Kings 16... 29 on the 33. The Woman of God videos, we get really in-depth in this. Okay? Uh, 1 Kings 16, 29 on the 33. All right. And in the 30 and 8th year of Asa, king of Judah, began Ahab. Ahab. Did I say Ahaz? Ahab. Be, uh, the son of Omri. Read about Omri. Uh, excuse me. And in the thirty and eighth year of Asa king of Judah began Ahab the son of Omri to reign over Israel. And Ahab the son of Omri reigned over Israel in Samaria twenty and two years. And Ahab the son of Omri did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. As bad as Manasseh. And it came to pass as if it had been a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. That's not in the text there. 
that he took to wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ethbal and Ethbaal, Ethbaal, and Ethbaal, is, if I'm not mistaken, means servant of Baal. Baal, the rising of the sun. Mystery Babylon, the date, the mother of violence and abominations of the earth. Let's continue. Okay? But as I, as I understand it, Eth Baal means servant of Baal. Baal, king of the Zidonians, and went and served Baal and worshipped him. What are we reading to? Verse 33. And he reared up an altar for Baal in the house of Baal which he had built in Samaria. And Ahab made a grove. And Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. Now, openly, Jezebel was not the king. She wasn't, you know, openly. But 1 Kings 18, verses 1 and verse 4. And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go, shew thyself unto Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. And Elijah went to shew himself unto Ahab. And there was a sore famine in Samaria. And Ahab called Obadiah, which was the governor of his house. Now Obadiah feared the Lord greatly, for it was so when Jezebel, Jezebel, who was king in Israel at this time? Ahab, but under the color of darkness. Who was really the one calling the shots? Type of Roman Catholic Church. The white pope. <laughs> Francis, being controlled by the most powerful, deadliest man on earth, Arturo Sosa, the head of the Jesuit order. This is Catholicism. For it was so when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord. Who Did Ahab do that? No, he was being controlled by his little harlot whore wife, Jezebel. Well, I bet was very faithful to him. She had to be in order to control him. Mm. Delilah, anyone? Anyway, let's continue. That Obadiah took an hundred prophets and hid them in, by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water. Mm. Now, Ahab was the king, but who cut off the prophets of the Lord? Jezebel. Uh, look at verse 13. Was it not told, and Obadiah talking with Elijah, was it not told my Lord what I did when Jezebel slew the prophets of the Lord, how I hid an hundred men of the Lord's prophets by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water. And she was the daughter of the king of, Zid of the Zidonians, Eth Baal. Hmm. She was the one who cut off the prophets of the Lord. Hmm. Interesting. Now, verse 19 in the same chapter. Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel and the prophets of Baal 450 and the prophets of the groves 400 which eat at Jezebel's table. Ha! <laughs> you mean the king's table. <laughs> <laughs> you know, your God loves you, buddy. Anyway, anyway, Jezebel's table. And you read about King David, you know, the the table of King David. Okay, I don't want to give that guy any props. But, you know, whose table was it? Was it, the, was it the table of King Ahab? No, it was Jezebel's table. See, openly King Ahab was king. But who was the one? And 
Jezebel outlived her husband. Uh, 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 First Kings 19, 1 and 2. And Ahab, the king, told Jezebel, goes to his wife, oh, I'm going to tell my wife on you, all that Elijah had done, and with all how he had slain all the prophets of the sword with the sword. Um, whipped, manipulated, controlled. Ahab was a puppet to Jezebel. Okay? You get it? All right? Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods, little g, do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And of course, Elijah went and scurried along and whatnot. Okay? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Okay? Um, <laughs> who, was, who was in control during the reign of Ahab? Ahab was the figurehead king, but Jezebel was the one controlling him behind the scenes. So, in a sense, Jezebel was the ruler. In a sense. Because look at that! Ahab was like, hey, I'm going to go tell my wife on you. She was the one who cut off the prophets of the Lord. Uh, 1 Kings 21, 1 Kings 21, 5 on the 10. 5 on the 10. Now this, dear brethren, shows the sissification of Ahab, of how manipulated and controlled he was. He went to Nebaioth. He's like, I want your vineyard. And I'll sell it to me, and I'll give you one that looks better. And Nebaioth is like, I ain't selling you nothing, man. And then little, and you can read this on your own time. And then little King Ahab went like a little, like a little boy, like a little baby boy. And then he cried. He laid down on his bed and sucked his thumb. And, and then along comes his wife. Five on the ten. But Jezebel, his wife, came to him and said unto him, Why is thy spirit so sad that thou eatest no bread? And he said unto her. Because I, and I could see this coward of a man, Ahab, and I, and I would say that to his face. Hey, cut my head off, or have his wife cut my head off, but I would say this to his face, if the chance ever went, of course I won't, but. And he said unto her, because I spake unto the Baal, the Jezreelite, and said unto him, give me thy vineyard for money, or else if it please thee, I will give thee another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give thee my vineyard, Oh, boo-hoo-hoo. A wimp. A sissy. Check this out. And you can look at Delilah as means of manipulation. But check this out. And Jezebel is... You gotta love this. You talk about manipulating. And Jezebel, his wife, sent on to him, you know, puffing someone up. You know, that's something that narcissists can do. Uh, who are manipulating, controlling people? They will give you, they will puff you up in a certain way, but all the while manipulating you while doing it. You know, you gotta watch out for this. This is something you can really learn about um, studying about <laughs> this evil woman Jezebel. And Jezebel, his wife, said unto him, "Dost thou now govern the kingdom of Israel?" Uh, no. But see, she was saying that to you know bolster him up. But look at what happens. She's the one who cut off the prophets of Baal. She was the one who threatened Elijah to the point where he ran off. And she's the one who's going to... She was, the, she was the one who was doing it. She, Jezebel, in type, Roman Catholicism, was the one who was manipulating everything behind the scenes. Ahab was her puppet. Arise and eat bread. And let thine heart be merry in the delusion that he was actually king. No, he wasn't. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. Ahab was king. Yes, he was. But who was controlling him? His wife. 
What did we read in Genesis 3, 16, unto verse 19? You go back there and look yourself, okay? <laughs> and verse 7, what does she say? I will give thee the vineyard of Nebaioth, the Jezreelites, the Jezreelite, excuse me. She'll do it. Look at that verse 7. Little bit in verse 6. Ahab, a little sissy boy, little baby boy, crying because he didn't get his way. The same one as like, who's like, I'm going to tell my wife on Elijah. And then she's the one. Come on. And what are we reading to here? <coughs> uh, in this, uh, where are we? Oh, in uh, on the verse 10. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name. Speaking for the king. She was the one who was controlling it. Okay? And sealed them with his seal. And sent letters on to the elders and to the nobles that were in his city, dwelling with Naboth. And she wrote in the letter saying, Proclaim a fast and set Naboth on high among the people. And set two men, sons of Belial, Belial, before him to bear witness against him, saying, Thou didst blaspheme God and the king. And then carry him out and stone him that he may die. That's exactly what happened. You you look at this. Who was the one running things under the reign of Ahab? Ahab was the figurehead. It was Jezebel. Ultimate, ultimately, it was Jezebel. Total picture of Rome. Okay? Total picture of Rome. Okay? Uh, skip now to verses 15 and 16. Okay? And it came to pass, and of course they killed Nebaioth, uh, uh, Nebaioth, okay? And it came to pass when Jezebel heard that Naboth was stoned and was dead, that Jezebel said to Ahab, Arise, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite, which he refused to give thee for money. For Naboth is not alive but dead. Talk about manipulation and control. I bet you... Well, let, let's read verse 16. Then, and it came to pass when Ahab heard that Nebaioth was dead, that Ahab rose up to go down to the vineyard of, Neba, of Naboth, the Jezreelite, to take possession of it. I bet you... And you read about uh, Jeze, Jezebel painting her face... I bet you that Jezebel was a beautiful. I bet you Jezebel was a gorgeous knockout woman. I bet you she was. Oh, I, I bet you she was a fine looking woman. I bet you she was. And no marvel. Satan himself was transformed into an angel of light. The anointed cherub that had all those precious stones and the pleasant pipes <laughs> with her much fair speech caused him to oh yeah oh yeah I, 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 and I'm going to be a little crude here but go with me I bet she gave it up whenever he wanted and back then I, I'm sorry that was crude but in comparison today I'm sorry but the point is she knew how to control Ahab. And Ahab was a whipped man. She controlled him. But to give the suspension of disbelief that he was king. She said, oh, where, where, where is that? Where is that? She says in verse 7, Dost thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? Well, in, in type, yes. But who was the one who was? It was Jezebel. It was Jezebel. Now, figure, you know, like I said, Ahab was king. And, of, of course, in the eyes of God, he was the head. But Jezebel manipulated Ahab. In a sense, Jezebel was the ruler. In a sense. In a sense. In a sense. Did you hear that? Okay. Hmm. Yeah. And, and uh, let's look at verse 25. Verse 25. But there was none like unto Ahab, 
which did sell himself to work wickedness in the life in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel his wife stirred up. Second Kings chapter nine. Second Kings chapter nine. Uh, verse ten, just one verse. This is what God had to say about Jezebel. And the dog shall eat Jezebel in the portion of Jezreel, and there shall be none to bury her. And he opened the door and fled. This is when the one guy was prophesying to uh, Jehu about what he was going to do. And also in verse 37, in verse 37 of the same chapter, And the carcass of Jezebel, shall be as dung upon the face of the field in the portion of Jezreel, so that they shall not say, this is Jezebel. God's judgment against Jezebel. Revelation 18. Oh, you know, you knew it, brother, sister. You know, you were thinking it, weren't you? Of course, of course, of course, of course. Revelation 18. 7 on the 10. This is talking about Rome, Roman Catholicism. The destruction, the inevitable destruction of Roman Catholicism. Oh, praise the Lord. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. Standing afar off, for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, Roman Catholicism, it's not Jerusalem, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. See, this is the perfect standard. This is the standard by which I judge. History, you know, Cleopatra, uh, Joan of Arc, I guess it was a little crazy. Uh, you know, you have history of uh, great women leaders. Scripturally, though, look, women, when it's, God didn't design you to be the head. You, you can go ahead and cast your stones at me. Your, your problem is not with me. It's with God and what he said. Uh, stupid head, Christy Burke. Oh, that, 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 uh, stupid head. <laughs> that, that, uh, that's a perfect example of what I'm talking about here. Of what we're talking about here. Children are your oppressors and women rule over you. Women. You were not made to be the head. You have a problem with that. Your problem was with God and with what he said. And see, so far, we've looked at when women were in means of having a, an authority of type. Wasn't good. 1 Kings 10. 1 Kings 10. We have to touch this because uh, now you'll be like, well, what about the Queen of the South? Well, let's go there. Okay? Queen of the South. 1 Kings 10, verses 1 on to verse 10. And when the king, Queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, she came to prove him with hard questions. And she came to Jerusalem with a very great train, with camels that bear spices and very much gold and precious stones. And when she was come to Solomon, she communed with him of all that was in her heart. Obviously, was the queen of Sheba the king of Israel? No. Okay? No. See, distinction right there. 
King Solomon representing the Hebraic Jews, God's chosen people, Queen of Sheba, a Gentile, representing those of the world, and those of the world, they say it's okay to have a woman ruler. Okay? God's example under the law was Israel. We talked about this, I believe, in Friday's video. I believe. Okay, let's continue. And Solomon told her all her questions. There was not anything hid from the king, which he told her not. And when the queen of Sheba heard all Solomon's wisdom and the house that he had built and the meat of his table and the sitting of his servants and the attendance of his ministers and their apparel and his cupbearers cup and his ascent by which he went up unto the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit in her. And that's lowercase s, of course. And she said to the king, it was a true report that I heard in mine own land of thy acts and of thy wisdom. Albeit I believed not the, the words until I came, and mine eyes had seen it, and behold, the half was not told me. Thy wisdom and prosperity exceedeth the fame which I heard. Happy are thy men. Happy are these thy servants, which stand continually before thee, and that hear thy wisdom. Blessed be the Lord thy God, which delighted in thee, to set thee on the throne of Israel, because the Lord loved Israel forever. Therefore made he thee king, to do judgment and justice. And she gave the king an hundred and twenty talents of gold and spices very and of spices, very great store, and precious stones. There came no more such abundance of spices and these as these which the Queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. See, the woman is to be the keeper of the home, to be the help meet. And in the eyes of God, that is glorious. That is beautiful. The woman is the glory of the man. That's the way God designed it. And there is nothing wrong because that is of what God has designed. Women. Now, the quick, now uh, very quickly, uh, one verse, uh, Luke 11, Luke 11, Luke 11, verse 31, okay? Luke 11, verse 31, okay? Luke 11, verse 31. Uh, let's read verse 29 on to verse 32. And when the people were gathered thick together, he began to say, This is an evil generation. They seek a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of Jonas the prophet. For as Jonas was a sign unto the Ninevites, so shall also the Son of Man be to this, this meaning that particular genu generation. The Queen of the South, shall rise up in the judgment with this men, with the men of this generation and condemn them. For she came from the utmost parts to hear the, of the earth, to hear the wisdom of Solomon, which we just looked at, the queen of the south. And behold, the greater than Solomon is here. So that's saying that the God, so God is calling the queen of the south a righteous ruler. Number one, not a representative of Israel, but what it's being compared onto. That the queen of the south will condemn that generation. Think, ab think about that. Think about that. Okay? The queen of the south will condemn that generation for the evil that they are doing. How does that speak when he's referencing the queen of the south Queen of Sheba, in a positive life against those to whom he's speaking. Think about that. Example, the ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But my people do not know, my people doth not consider. You get it? The men of Nineveh shall rise up 
in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. For they repented at the preaching of Jonas. And behold, greater than Jonas is here. Like I said in the beginning of this video, for, um, easy believism is a daughter of the whore, Roman Catholicism. The Roman Catholic coadjutors serving the Vatican, it's of Satan. Easy believism. You know that something is really bad, say sinless perfectionism, when, you, uh, when easy believists are, can readily refute sinless perfectionism. Get it? Do you understand? Okay? E easy believism is not good. Absolutely, because it's not of God. But when easy believism can rightly refute sinless perfection in this life, how bad is sinless perfection? How bad was that generation when the Lord is mentioning the pagan queen of the south? Well, we don't really know. You're right, we don't. But what we are given, we are given the idea that, okay, she was a pagan king. And a pagan king knew better than the generation that he was addressing. That's the point. That's the point. That's the point. Oh, and Acts 8, let's mention this. Uh, another one, Acts 8. Acts 8, 27 on to 28. Just two verses. Okay? Acts 8, 27 on to 28. And he arose, Philip, and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candice, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. Charge of all her treasure. So that gives us to think what? That Candace sent her eunuch to make an offering on her behalf of the actual God, her being queen of the Ethiopians. Hmm. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, an eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasures, all her treasure, and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. Okay? Now in verse 27, it just says that he had the charge of all her treasure, and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. He was the one worshiping. But it is noted that he was had great authority under Candace, and the fact that he had a charge of all her treasure is very significant, which gives us which suggests to us that he did an offering for her on her behalf. But regardless, that's all that's mentioned of her. And regardless, it does not point to approval of God as her of queen. Especially in context that it wasn't of Israel to begin with. Okay? Alright? Are, are you with me? Are you with me? Now go to 2 Kings 11. 2 Kings 11. 2 Kings 11. Facts are, dear friends, scripturally, women in Ruling authority generally are not looked in as a in a positive light. You have Deborah the prophetess. Yes, she was considered a judge. Yes, okay. Talk about an exception. Okay, Esther did not seek to usurp or manipulate or control Ahasuerus. She pleaded with him, besought him. Okay? All right? And Rome and the Mary of Scripture is not the Mary of Rome. Okay? What's the point of all this? To show you scripturally that having a woman uh, as a ruler, scripturally, 
De okay, Deborah the prophetess. And you also have um, Miriam. Okay? Sure. Sure. But when and the ruling authority, it's not looked on in a positive light in Scripture. I think we've proved that through Scripture already. If the Jesuit order are allowed to select Kamala Harris, that is a that is a judgment against this perverted, disgusting nation which is called America. Which was doomed at the inception of Mary's land in the first 13 original colonies or 13 states. 2 Kings 11, uh, 2 Kings 11, verses 1 on to verse 3. And when Athaliah, the mother of Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the seed royal. She rose up. But Jehosh, Jehosh Eba, the daughter of King Joram, sister of Ahaziah, took Joash, the son of Ahaziah, and stole him from among the king's sons, which were slain. Ah, so you have Athaliah killing all the king's sons, her grandchildren, basically, or whatever they were, uh, so she could solidify her rule. Yeah. In the bedchamber from Athaliah, so that he was not slain. And he was with her, hid in the house of the Lord six years, and Athaliah did reign over the land. Scripturally, this is the only account of a woman actually being attributed as ruling over the land of Israel. Deborah was a prophetess, a judge. Okay? Different scenario. Okay? This is the only time in Scripture over the children of Israel in this context of a woman being in the authority like this. Okay? Now skip to verses 13 on to verse 16 in the same chapter. Okay? And uh, where's, where's his name? I always messed up on it, but I was corrected about it. Um, J. Hoy Ada who took that kid and nurtured him. He, he did a lot for the Lord to reestablish the line of the king. Okay, and he did that, verses 13 on to verse 16. And when Athaliah heard the noise of the guard and of the people, she came to the people into the temple of the Lord. And when she looked, behold, the king stood by a pillar, as the manner was, and the princes and the trumpeteers by the king. And all the people of the land rejoiced and blew with trumpets. And Athaliah rent her clothes and cried, Treason! Treason! But Jehoiada, the priest, commanded the captains of the hundreds, the officers of the hosts, and said unto them, Have her forth without the ranges, and him that followeth her kill with the sword. For the priest had said, let her not be slain in the house of the Lord. What are we reading on to? Verse 16. And they laid hands on her, and she went by the way, by the which the horses came into the king's house, and there was she slain. And you also read another part in Scripture where the queen was removed because she set up a grove, Scripturally speaking, you know, Deborah the prophetess, she was accounted a judge. Yes, she was. Yes, she was. Uh, and at that time, remember, and you can read in this in 1 Samuel, the Lord was the king during that time. But they eventually wanted a physical eye candy king, and he gave them Saul. Scripturally, Scripturally speaking. And Judith, dude, that's not scripture. Okay? 
Scripturally speaking, dear friend, women in ruling authority Now you, you might have a problem with that. And you can go ahead and take it out on me. Go ahead. I don't give a rat's rear end. Your problem is with my father and with what God hath said. That's your problem. Okay? Romans 13. Romans 13. Romans 13. And then we'll be done. Romans 13. Verses 1 on verse 7. Let every soul be subject unto the high powers. For there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Amen. The government here in America that is ordained of God, allowed of God, is here for what? Judgment against this nation. A testimony against this nation. The Jesuits select and put in office Kamala Harris as the figurehead being manipulated by Rome of this nation. Oh, wow. Personally, I don't think it will be any better if they select Trump. But who is ever going to be worse for the nation is who they are going to put in. Why? Because the powers... The powers that be are ordained of God. So look at it this way, brother. If, if, and I don't think they will, even with this assassination thing that's going on, playing the Superman, right? And I agree with you, brother, but they put that twit Kamala Harris in, and they're playing the, you know, she's a, she's a hermetic woman, you know, strong. She's an idiot. Uh, and, and, you know, dear hemetic brethren and sisters, you know, it's like, she, she's, she's not truly hemetic. She has like, the, she's more Asiatic than hemetic. And hemetic brethren and hemetic sisters are the ones that's like, she, 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 you know, come on. But yes. The, the Lord, yes, allows, ordains these people in the government. Yes, He does. He allows it for judgment against it. Who is ever going to be the worst for this country is whom is going to be the next president figure of this Jesuit America. And I truly believe, even though they're playing the part beautifully with Trump, I believe they're going to put Kamala Harris in. Like we said at the beginning of this video, America wasn't conditioned right with Hillary. But they are now. They are now. Like I said, the whole, i uh, got a lot for the description box. I'm going to put also the woke thing in the description box. A lot of stuff for you to chew on, but let's continue here. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves group, selves damnation. And these Christians in the building, you know, the 501c3 Catholics, all of them uh, in the buildings, if you're in a church building with the, you know, phallus on top, you're, you're yoked up with Rome, plain and simple, okay? Uh, check out Brother Alexander B. Hartley's videos on church and churches, okay? Uh, they'll come to this and it's like, see, you got to do everything the government says. Question! When my government says to abort a unborn child, commit murder, do I do it? Huh? What happens when my government says something that is totally contrary to what God says? The Christians in the building say, well, do what man says. Uh, oh, nay, nay. Oh, nay, nay. Come to hear, they, uh, they like also 1 Peter 2, 13 on to 17, which we're not going to look at. But, um, okay, but let's continue. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. 
For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do evil, but if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon them that do evil. Evil. Meaning. Okay. You kill someone. <laughs> like in Texas. Uh, you kill them, we're going to kill you. Okay. Uh, you steal, get put in jail. Okay. That kind, that's what that's talking about. Okay. It is this Jesuit controlled government that interjects itself into the lives of the person, spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Democracy. And remember, hey, King James, Bible, Christians, we're inevitably going to be under a dictatorship. King of kings, Lord of lords. Not a refined, perfected democracy. I have heard King James, Bible, Christians make that statement. That the kingdom of heaven is going to be a perfected form of America. I've heard it. Oh, oh, they're, they, 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 they're smoking what Dave Murphy gives them. Okay? Let's finish this up. Wherefore, verse 5, ye must need be not, must needs be subject not for not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. For for this cause pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Read verse 8. O no man anything, but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. See, if we get invaded, we've already been invaded, but, um, you know, the barbarian horde. But uh, if we got invaded, like on the shores, uh, that's our government is there to protect us. Then again, most people are aware that a lot of us, you know, we like guns. <laughs> we like guns. <laughs> we do. And, um, and that's one of the things, you know. That's one of the things. Think about that. Think about that, brethren. You know, uh, think about that. You know, Kamala Harris is elected, selected, and you know, that stupid Democrat woke stuff. And hey, like I said, I'm not a Republican. Okay, I'm not. Not at all. I'm neither. But you know, try to get the guns from Americans and set off a civil war. And you know, praise the Lord for those in the South. You know, you try to get them their guns, it's like, okay, we're going to give you our bullets first. Okay? You know, like I said, scripturally speaking, and this is my standard. This is what I judge myself by and you by. This is my, this is truth, absolute truth. This is my go-to. Scripturally speaking, as ruling authority, children are your oppressors and women rule over you. sign of judgment and I do personally and hey if I'm wrong and they select Trump it's still going to be horrible for that means that Trump overall was the worst one for our nation and hey if they select Trump go ahead and y'all knock me out I don't care but if they select Kamala Harris well I think they're going to Even so, come Lord Jesus. Thank you for watching this. If you do, I'm going to upload this. Got a lot of stuff for the description box for you. Hey, take a fence, take a gate. I'm not sorry. I don't got much time left, man. And we, we're, going, we're going to speak it like it is. So, thank you, brethren. Thank you, brethren. Ah, you know, uh, my God, there's a there's a sweetheart from Georgia who uh, I haven't talked to in a while. God, I'm going to be calling you soon, brother. <laughs> um, thank you, brethren. Thank you.
I love you. We will see you in the next video.